Welcome to another edition of Green is Good. We're so excited to have back on the show Danielle Nirenberg. She's the co-founder of Food Tank. Welcome back to Green is Good, Danielle. Thank you so much. Um, you know, Danielle, you're doing such important work at Food Tank, and we were so thrilled to have you on the first time. But we're going to continue the conversation today. But before we get to talking about the journey you're on at Food Tank and all the great work you do there, I, for the listeners who didn't have the opportunity to hear the first show, please just share the Danielle Nirenberg story first and how you even came to this position and how you co-founded this great and amazing organization. Thank you. You know, Food Tank is really based on a lot of the work that I had the opportunity to do in in, uh, the developing world. I spent about two years on the ground visiting more than 35 countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And I had this great opportunity to talk to hundreds of farmers groups and women's groups, researchers, scientists, policymakers, uh, students and academics, journalists, and others who are really working uh, on the ground, and, and, you know, I have this great, you know, opportunity again to really share their stories of hope and success. And, and what we try to do with Food Tank is, is really, you know, shine a spotlight on those stories and show eaters and policymakers and the funding and donor communities what's really uh, working on the ground and what has a lot of potential to be replicated and scaled up. And so you co-founded Food Tank. With a friend of yours, or was it just a, another person you met along the way, or who did you found food, t- uh, food Tank with? Our co-founder is Ellen Gustafson, and she and I would keep running into each other at different conferences. <laughs> we were often, um, you know, the only sort of youngish people on panels, you know, with uh, a lot of, you know, uh, old stalwarts uh, of the food and ag uh, and development communities. And we, we really wanted to create something new and, and um, you know, exciting and, and put a fresh perspective uh, on these issues. So I'm on your website now. It is just gorgeous and I'm a huge fan and I get you I'm signed up to your newsletter which I get all the time and for our listeners who want to follow along as we chat today it's www.foodtank.org so take us through this Danielle what are the most important issues today in food and agriculture you know we're highlighting a, a couple of different core issue areas one for us is is food waste we had an event last month in New York City that really highlighted the importance of of preventing food loss and food waste. About 1.3 billion tons of food is wasted each year. Um, We're also working on cultivating the next generation of farmers and really putting a focus on youth. Um, One of the things that I'm most excited about that we're doing right now is focusing on the International Year of Family Farming. Uh, that will be launched in 2014, and what we've been doing is really building up and, and working with the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization to collaborate on this project. And again, really build up and highlight the importance of family farming around the world, not just for food and nutrition security, but for income generation, uh, for social stability, uh, and, and for really uh, protecting biodiversity and our natural resources. And what, what do you mean by um, two things? Explain a little bit further family farming. What does that mean? And how does that tie to International Family Farming Year? How can we, our, your listeners and people who are fans of what you're doing, um, help out and, and, and learn more about family farming? Absolutely. Uh, family farmers, you know, the, the definition is very loose, but we're classifying them as the 500 million farmers around the world who are, are generally farming on, on two hectares of land or less. That's about five acres. These uh, 500 million folks are, are, are feeding the world. Their, their contributions feed about 2 billion people or contribute to the livelihoods of 2 billion people worldwide. And, you know, they're often ignored. A lot of the investment, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, is not in, in smallholder farms. It's in, um, you know, some of these sexy new technologies that, that governments and, and uh, development agencies think will, will be silver bullets for ending poverty and hunger. Unfortunately, again, you know, agricultural investment in, in the smallholder has, has diminished. And, you know, it's only been since 2007 and 2008 when the food and financial crisis began 
that, you know, we, we've started paying attention to, to smallholder farmers again. So this, this International Year of Family Farming um, is designated by the United Nations. Uh, every year they, they pick a special uh, topic to focus on. Um, this year it was quinoa. The year before it was cooperative. So International Year of Family Farming is just an opportunity for us all to recognize the importance of family farming. Uh, in the United States, you know, we know that family farms have, have decreased really since the 1980s. The average age of farmers in the United States is about 57 years old. And, and farms have gotten bigger here, and, and families have often been pushed off their farms because of, of you know, uh, poor weather or poor economic returns. Um, last year, the drought that hit the United States really, you know, uh, put a lot of uh, smaller and medium scale into the larger farms out of business in the United States because the, the, the farms couldn't cope. And what we're trying to emphasize is that by focusing on family farms, and, and recognizing the contributions they make, we can really do a lot to make sure that they get the investment they need. And talk a lot about, um, talk some more about doing a lot. I love that. Um, what can consumers do when they learn more from your great organization, Food Tank? And for our listeners out there, we've got Danielle Nirenberg back on the show. She's the co-founder of Food Tank, and it's foodtank.org. What can consumers do to become part of the solution? Well, one of the biggest steps we can make is just, you know, really recognizing that our food comes from from not only farms, but from people, and really putting a human face to the food that we eat. You know, whether you're able to shop at a farmer's market in your community or a farm stand that you see on the side of the road or ask your grocery store where your food is coming from, you know, just creating more awareness, educating yourself, and whenever you can, contributing to the local economy. Those farmers are part of your community, and the more that you can support them, the better. Uh, you know, we also need to not only vote with our fork, but we also need to vote with our votes and really make sure that we're voting policymakers in office who are concerned about agriculture and concerned about maintaining um, family farms in, in the United States. You know, our country was built on farming, and we really need to recognize that it's an important part of our history, and it's an important part of, of improving our health and our own livelihood. That's, you know, so Food Tank is doing, is, is, is helping right now move the mission forward for International Family Farming Year. But let's, let's go back to, to what our first interview ca- covered more, Danielle. What's the macro? Talk a, you know, talk a little bit about Food Tank's mission and what other goals and initiatives you're working on right now to help move the needle and change the world every day. You know, Food Tank's mission is really to create a better food system, and we mm. do this by highlighting and researching economically, socially, and environmentally uh, sustainable ways of alleviating hunger, obesity, and poverty throughout the world. And we're, we're convening individuals and organizations and research and data to really make the food system better and, and to push these initiatives forward. Um, you know, our... If you look at what's going on in the world, we have about 1 billion people who are hungry. We have Mm. 1.5 billion people who are obese. Mm. 2 billion people suffer from micronutrient deficiencies. 70% of global water use is used in agriculture. We're, We're losing natural resources at an astonishing rate. And, you know, we're, we're obviously not doing something right. The food system is broken. We're, we're good at filling people up, but we're not actually good at nourishing them. Mm. And so we, you know, with our efforts and highlighting these stories of hope and success, we're able to show what's working in the world and really help push um, the conversation forward and really highlight how the funding and donor communities aren't always investing in the right things and that they need to. Yeah, I'm on your site now, of course, and like I shared with our listeners, foodtank.org, you have partners, you have volunteers. Are you looking for more corporate partners, and are you looking for more volunteers to join your mission? You know, uh, we're, we're not really looking for corporate uh, uh, partners in the sense that we, we want their funding, but we're looking for, you know, really highlighting what, what businesses are doing. I think a lot of folks in, in the sustainable agriculture community have really ignored the role that business can play. Um, you know, there's so many uh, great uh, small and medium and, and, and larger businesses and corporations that are trying to do the right thing. Um, mm. and, and some of them are, are doing it well and some aren't. But we really want to highlight how, how the private sector 
can make a big dent in, in creating um, a, a better food system. You know, and in terms of, of volunteers, we're looking for, for folks to, you know, who have a variety of skills, whether they're interested in helping write for our website or uh, contributing to our resource database, which right now has about 1,200 entries, and we really hope to um, create a central clearinghouse for the best information on agroecological practices, you know, that are available on, on the web and really bring them together so that when, whether you're a farmer or a consumer or a policymaker or uh, a donor, you can come to our site and really find the information that you need. Got it. And, and of course, they can, you have over 100,000 subscribers to your newsletter, which I'm one of them. And so people can sign up for that. They could also donate on your website, and they could um, uh, get a lot of information. I'm on there right now. There's a lot of young ladies in this world, Danielle. Our show broadcasts nationally, then it gets uploaded to iTunes, and it goes around the world. And we got about three minutes left. Can you share backwards some you're, – you're very young still, but there's a lot of young women that are in their teens – struggling because they want to really do something meaningful either when they're making their college choice or graduate school choice and they want to not just go work for a big company or go into a a profession that they're really not that interested in but has good money they want to change the world share some of your thoughts on that kind of journey the journey you've taken and how other young women can follow your lead and become the next danielle nirenberg Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, I, I think it's, you know, everyone has to make their own choices. And I remember, you know, uh, telling my parents I, I made up my major in undergrad and it was environmental policy and government. And they were excited for me. But, you know, years later, my mom said, we wondered how you were going to make money with that. And so, you know, it, it's hard to, to make the choices that you feel passionate about in a world, especially, you know, with our economy the way it is right now. Uh, you know, without thinking of, about money. And I think what's exciting at this particular point in time is that the food system, it, it really provides so much opportunity for folks, whether you want to be, you know, a researcher or a writer like I am, or someone who's, you know, into baking artisanal bread, or if you want to mm-hmm. be a farmer, now is the time. There, there's so much interest and so much passion around these issues. And, you know, what, one of the things that we've tried to emphasize is that agriculture can really be the solution, whether you're talking about youth unrest in the developing world or unemployment in the United States or climate change. Agriculture can really provide a lot of solutions to these problems. And so I think that's so exciting, and I really encourage, you know, people who are in their teens and 20s to follow what they believe in so that, you know, if you're doing what you love, the money will follow. That's such such good advice, and I really believe, and I have a daughter, Danielle, and I tell my daughter and I tell other young women that work for our company or our associated companies that I think we're really moving into the generation of women, and there's very few uh, glass ceilings left, maybe soon to be, a woman president of the United States is definitely women leaders around the world now. Not many glass ceilings left, and I think women are going to be the leaders in so many ways, including sustainability and agriculture. You're one of them, and we're so thankful for your time again today. Um, for our listeners out there to learn more about all the great work Danielle and her co-founder have done and are doing every day, please go to www.foodtank.org and see that work. And Danielle Nirenberg. We're so proud to have you back on. You're always welcome to come back on. Green is good. You're a sustainability superstar and truly living proof that green is good. Thank you so much.